the Fed raised interest rates yet again. So where are HELOC rates now? And is this the end of the HELOC in 2023 or are there brighter days ahead? Let's get into it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Jay Costa. I'm an investor, a builder, and an agent in real estate here in northern New Jersey. And if you get any value out of this video, please hit that like button. It really, truly helps me out. And also consider subscribing. We are building a community here, a community of real estate investors, and would love for you to be a member, a part of it. I don't know if you could tell. Maybe you, you can if you've listened to my other videos, but I've Apologize, I have a little bit of a sinus issue here, a lot of sinus pressure, so if I struggle with a word or two, if I have a little squeak in my voice, that is why I apologize. I'll be better on the next ones, but I'm gonna power my way through this. So in this video, I wanted to go over what HELOC rates are like right now here in early 2023, right after the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell just decided to raise the uh, federal funds rate by a quarter, 0.25 of a percent. What does this mean if you want to use your HELOC in real estate invest? Has this effectively killed it or can it still be an effective tool in real estate investing given the right circumstances? Now, I made a previous video back in August or September where I basically went over what these interest rate hikes were doing to the HELOC as a tool when the Fed was aggressively raising interest rates by a half a point or 0.75 a point uh, every single time that they met with a lot of hikes being promised going forward. I also shared my warnings to everyone with a HELOC in that sort of great environment and what I thought that you should stay away from. I mentioned buying depreciating assets, funding your lifestyle, as well as using it to fund certain investments like stocks or cryptocurrency, for instance. But now after the Federal Reserve just decided to only raise it by a quarter of a point, it kind of maybe seems like the worst of it is over maybe. And I think this could definitely allow some flexibility and some opportunity using your HELOC going forward in investing in real estate investing. So first, let's go over how a HELOC rate is calculated just so we're all on the same page. In order to understand this, you need to know three different terms. One, you need to know the federal funds rate. This is the rate set directly by the Federal Reserve. And this is the rate that basically everyone talks about when the Federal Reserve hikes interest rates. They're, they're setting the federal funds rate. Number two, you need to know the prime rate. The prime rate, very, very simply put, is the federal funds rate plus three percentage points. And number three, you need to know the spread or the margin of your particular HELOC. Now, the margin will be different depending on your lender, your credit score, and how much you're taking out for your HELOC, but it is very simply the difference between the prime rate and what your lender is charging you. Usually, the home equity line of credit lender has a certain spread or margin. Usually, it's about one to one and a half percent. So, for instance, my margin on my HELOC account is 1.04 percent, and as of right now, as of February 2nd, the last time the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates, the prime rate is 7.75%. That means as of February 2nd, my home equity line of credit interest rate is now 8.79%. Generally speaking, guys, I find that talking about uh, interest rates being hiked over and over can be a bit overdone, especially here on YouTube. We all know that it's coming. And just because they hike the rate again doesn't mean that the economy or the housing market is going to collapse like some would want you to believe. But... The reason I wanted to discuss uh, this with you right now is, well, two reasons. Number one, most HELOCs are pegged directly to this number, directly to the federal funds rate and the prime rate. So when the Fed raises interest rates by half a point, that means your HELOC interest rate is going up by exactly that half a point. That's why it's very, very important if you have a HELOC or you're looking to get a HELOC, you have to be aware of what exactly is going on and what this rate is at all times. This is different than a mortgage rate, which can uh, kind of go up and down, not really directly correlated with the federal funds rate at all. But that gives us an advantage over a regular mortgage in a way as well, because you can kind of see the writing on the wall, because the Federal Reserve kind of tells you what their plan is or what their proposed plan is in the future. And this brings me to my number two reason I wanted to bring this up. I find this most recent rate hike, as well as all the commentary about it as well, since it's only 0.25%, 25 basis points, after the Federal Reserve hiked it by half a point or three quarters of a point every time, this may be the sign of a little bit of a leveling off and maybe a trend reversal coming soon, maybe. Now, obviously the HELOC is a much different tool now than it was a year, year and a half, two years ago, for sure. But there is definitely room for optimism and some light at the end of the tunnel. 
So what does this mean for real estate investing? Well, I think now you could say with some level of confidence that the uh, federal funds rate will be leveling off. You're not going to see these drastic huge rate increases that are going to shock the whole system like you were seeing about six months ago. So when you take money out from your HELOC, you can pretty much figure that the rate is not going to be much higher than maybe about a point or a percentage point more than what it is right now where six months ago probably had to take into account that there's a chance that it could be three percentage points higher, which it probably is. So when you're doing, so when you're underwriting a certain real estate investing deal, you could probably take into account, let's say a 10% uh, rate on your HELOC as like complete worst case scenario. Cause you figure they're not gonna keep going up at least not as aggressively as they were before. So what should you use your HELOC for? here in 2023. It's a different environment this year than it was last year than it was the year before. But as always, we begin and end here on this channel with real estate and real estate investing. So I will start with my number one thing to use a HELOC for. I've said this in previous videos in the past. I will put a link in the description box down below to all of these. I have them on a full playlist. You can check them all out. But my number one strategy to use a HELOC is a fix and flip project. The reason I love the fix and flip project with a HELOC is because A, it's short term and B, there's a clear exit strategy in place. You're going to buy a property, you're going to rehab it, and you're going to sell it. And it's all within six months, nine months, a year, whatever, whatever that specific project is going to be. So you may want to buy a property using either a conventional mortgage as well as possibly maybe a hard money loan or even cash. Obviously, if you have it, of course, you buy the property with that then maybe you use your HELOC for the rehab costs of the property. You take all of that out of your HELOC, use it to rehab the property, sell the property, and pay off both the HELOC and, you know, if it was a hard money loan, you pay that off, or a mortgage, you pay that off. Perfect. And the fact that it's short term means that any potential slight interest rate increases is not going to drastically change your bottom line on the deal. You could also use the HELOC for a long-term real estate investment, but you got to use the Burr strategy, the Burr method. This is basically pretty similar actually to a, uh, a fix and flip project kind of, but you're basically buying the property, you're rehabbing it, and then instead of going to sell it, you're renting it out and then selling it back to yourself basically by going to take a cash out refinance mortgage. If you have a lot of consumer debt or credit card debt, you're paying over 20% on this, yeah, of course it would make sense to take uh, debt, consumer debt that you have, consolidate it, into your HELOC where you're paying 9% or 8.5% or whatever it is, right? You're, you're saving on interest. But the main issue here is you need to address the root cause that got you that consumer debt in the first place. Because if you're just taking money out of your credit card and putting it into a HELOC, that's just going to free up those credit cards for you to make the same mistake again. And you're going to find yourself in the same situation again, actually even worse, because you're going to have the HELOC debt, and the credit card debt. You need to address the reason why you got into that problem in the first place. And if you don't have the discipline to do that, do not consolidate it into a HELOC. Now, what should you not use your HELOC for here in 2023? Well, number one, you should not be using it in any non-cash flowing real estate. It would be very easy while interest rates are higher right now to buy a property that does not cash flow, that's not a great deal, thinking, hey, in the future, the rates are going to come down and it's going to be a good deal. That's not how you should be underwriting deals and properties at all right now. Don't expect interest rates to go down. There is no guarantee of that. When underwriting a deal today, you should be using today's numbers. And I would only move on it if it works with today's numbers. Because like I said, I do have some bit of confidence that rates have at least leveled out and may even come down in the future. But if that happens, that's just a cherry on top and will make your deal look even better. Number two, and this is connected to number one, you really shouldn't be using your home equity line of credit for much of any long-term real estate investing unless you're gonna use the aforementioned Burr method. I've talked about many times in my previous HELOC videos, I do not use my home equity line of credit on anything long-term in real estate and nothing that I don't have a clear exit strategy for. The reason for this is pretty simply the variable interest rate that a HELOC has. One of the biggest advantages of long-term buy and hold rental properties, buy and hold real estate investing, is the fact that you have a fixed rate and a fixed mortgage payment, okay? And you're basically using both inflation and time 
to turn your deal into a really great deal. But if you use your HELOC for, let's say, like a down payment on a mortgage on a buy and hold investment uh, rental property, you're automatically making that payment not fixed any longer, which can turn your okay deal into a bad deal very quickly. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What are you using your home equity line of credit for in 2023? Are you being aggressive with it? Do you think the worst of it is over in regards to these rate hikes? Or are you still playing super, super conservative? I could see both ways, right? Because on one hand, the Federal Reserve is kind of saying that they're going to continue to raise rates, but not as aggressively as before, which is kind of what this whole video has been about. But on the other side, let's say there was some sort of economic catastrophe, right? And there was a ton of job losses and, you know, similar to 2008, let's say, for argument's sake you'd figure that the Federal Reserve would start dropping rates dramatically uh, when that happens. So I don't really see much of an opportunity or a chance that interest rates go like way, way higher from here. And I think it's important to use that to our advantage, not rely on it, but use it to our advantage to be able to foresee where these HELOC rates are going to be, you know, six months from now or something like that. So once again, let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and uh, I will see you next time.